What's up guys, this is Todd with we make a video on buying a gaming PC versus building a gaming PC. What are the benefits? Where do you save money? Uh, are you going to get ripped off? The reason I decided to make this video is some of the gaming communities I'm part of, a lot of people have questions about where they should buy a PC, what type of PC to buy, um, what PC components to buy, is building really all that much cheaper over buying one flat out, and if you are going to buy a gaming PC flat out, where should you buy it from? I don't have all the answers for it, I'm just going to go over a few that I found based on some of the different models of uh, gaming PCs that I'm seeing in the communities. The first one I want to look at is the Alienware Area 51. Though this one isn't really talked about a whole lot, who doesn't like a good uh, opportunity to shit on Dell and their Alienware series, right? So this Alienware Area 51, they're saying the market value is $3,568. They have a Black Friday deal going on right now, which brings it down to $2,999, basically three grand. With this, you get an i7-6850K, six-core hyper-threaded i7. That is an excellent processor. I got nothing to complain about. Uh, Windows 10, home 64-bit, uh, 16 gigs of uh, DDR4 at 2133. That's a little low for DDR4. Um, Mostly what I'm seeing is like 2600 and up. Uh, they've got the NVIDIA T GTX 1080 Founders Edition. Uh, and you can see what they've got here. Now, unfortunately, Dell makes a lot of their own components, their motherboards, things like that. So there's not really a good way to do a one-to-one -one comparison with building this for yourself. But if I were to put together a computer that's equal, probably even a little better than this one, I can save a lot of money from other than buying it from Dell. The one thing that did stick out to me is just the, the ports that they support, okay? I mean, we've only got USB 3 and USB 2. Most modern motherboards with the LGA 1151 chipset, which is for the new Gen i7s, um, have USB 3.1, the Type-C. Um, they have M.2 storage configuration. There's just a lot of modern things that are missing from this particular build. But anyway, when I spec'd out a build comparable to this one that was slightly better, in my opinion, it ran me about $1,875. That's a huge shaving over the $3,000. I mean, that's, what, $1,125 difference that you're saving just from building yourself as opposed to going with Dell. So Dell sucks. With it, you're basically paying that $1,100 for their one-year premium support. So if something goes wrong with your computer, a component breaks down, they will send a tech to your house to fix it for you or replace the part. That's about all you're getting for that extra 1100 bucks, and maybe to say, hey, I have an Alienware, which no one cares anymore. The next system that I want to look at that I found is CyberPower. Uh, CyberPower's uh, CyberPower PC, the Zeus Evo Storm, which is this particular one, the 3000, is the top of the line for their Storm series. Now this system runs in at four thousand seventy-nine bucks. Okay, so and again they're putting in the Razer Deathstalker keyboard. That's about eighty-five dollar component. The Corsair Obsidian nine hundred D tower. That's about a three hundred thirty-three dollar component. Um, there's just a lot of components going on in here that uh, are they're actually really good. Most of your money comes from this guy right here, the i7-6950X. That's a 10-core processor. That processor is roughly 1600 bucks, and that's a good price for it. I've seen him go for more than that. So with all the components you get here, you know, the liquid cooling kit, see right here we have USB 3.1 Type-C. That's good. That's all modern stuff. Uh, 3,000 megahertz DDR4. That's much better than the Dell. Uh, they've got the GTX 1080, the 8 gig. So there's a lot of good components you're getting with this. So and the great thing about CyberPower PC is they tell you exactly what you're getting. You can look up the components and actually price match and see if you're getting a good deal or not. With this particular system, when I compare components, um, I was able to save a pretty decent amount of money. Now I am comparing components against what I find at Newegg. Now that's just where I'm partial to buy my PC parts. There's plenty of other sources out there, uh, PC Part Picker, Price Watch, Amazon. There's lots of other places people buy their PC components. 
I'm just partial to Newegg and that's what I use as a price reference here. So depending on where you go, you might even be able to save some more money. But this particular bill that they have priced at 4,079, I was able to get that same bill at 3,633, saving about 450 bucks. Now, the one thing that you get with this is a standard warranty, one year on parts, and three year service plan. So you're basically paying for them to build you a system and you get the warranty, the three year service plan for roughly 450 bucks is what you're paying for that. That's not too big of a markup, especially for the components you're getting and someone building it for you. Uh, it's To me, that's not too much of an additional cost for the, the peace of mind that you're not going to screw up an expensive part by trying to build it yourself if you're not too tech savvy. Uh, the next one I'll look at by Cyber Power PC is their bottom end of the Zeus Evo uh, series, which is 1839 The biggest difference on this one is the processor is an i7-6800K. That is about a $380 processor as compared to the $1,600 processor from before. And this has a GTX 1060, the six gig version. So that is a really good card. You're gonna be able to do ultra settings at 1080p, 60 frames per second all day long, even some decent looking uh, 4K at 30 frame games. I mean, it's a pretty decent card by today's standards. So this particular build I was able to get at uh, 1,617 basically saving me $222. Again, for someone else to build it for you and you know put a warranty on parts and get a three-year service plan, 222 bucks isn't that bad, not bad at all. The next system that I wanna look at is going to be the iBuyPower Intel X99. And I didn't do any configurations on it. This is the base price for the components they offer with this at 1,399. And again, we can see all the components that they're giving you. So you can do a really good price match and see if you're getting a good deal or not. One, they, these also have a three year standard warranty that you're getting. And I was able to save $194 by building this computer myself. So their cost is $13.99, mine would have been $12.05. So again, not a lot you're spending extra. $194 isn't bad for someone else to build a computer for you, send it to you, and warranty it. That's not a bad deal at all. So, so far, I think CyberPower PC and iBuyPower, you're definitely not getting ripped off with the components. Not as bad as Dell bends you over with their Alienwares. This is actually reasonably priced for what you're getting. I don't really have any gripes about it. Now, the last company I wanna take a look at is these guys, Zydax. I've been seeing more and more of these guys pop up in relation to how great their customer service is and specifically the lifetime warranties they offer on their systems, which is awesome. Getting a lifetime warranty on a good gaming rig, that, that that's amazing, but at what cost? So let's dive in and see exactly what we're getting. Now, I did, my comparisons with the X6 and the X10. I stayed away from this X2 because if you just look at it, the processor, the video card, this is a pile of shit. This isn't even gonna be that great of a gaming system. So even that's overpriced for what you get. $642, I could build you know something with an 8350, same amount of RAM in a 1066 gig or an RX 488 gig for around 550 bucks, saving tons of money over this turd right here of the X2. So the first one I'm gonna take a look at is the X6. So with this, you're getting the i5 6600K. That's not a bad processor, not hyper-threaded, but it's not bad for gaming. You're getting uh, eight gigs of RAM at 2400. You're getting you know the Corsair CX500 power supply, uh, they are giving you the GTX 1070. That is a really good card. And again, lifetime parts and service warranty. That is awesome. That is a really good deal, but is it worth it? So they have this one priced at $1,756. If I spec this exact same build out, I can do it for around a thousand bucks. So saving you roughly seven, 750 bucks. So the question is, is a lifetime warranty worth 750 bucks to you? That's the question. To me, it's not, but if you're not real tech savvy or know how to fix things on your own or are, aren't comfortable with RMAing particular components that may go bad, because when you build a PC, you're gonna get a manufacturer warranty on the components, usually for a year, 
if something goes bad and you can buy additional warranties for like 15, 20 bucks to go up to three years. And then it's up to you to diagnose, find the problem, and then replace the part on your own. So is 750 bucks worth it? I don't know. I can't answer that question. To me, I'm not willing to pay that much just for a warranty. But this guy over here caught my eye, the X10. For $7,197, this better be a bad bitch. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we're getting with this. So you're getting their custom case, which looks just like that Corsair Obsidian, the 900D. It's very similar, so that's about a $330 case. Uh, you're getting the i7-6850K, that's a $500 processor, that's a great processor. 32 gigs of RAM, that is a shit ton of RAM. That's a decent amount. So there's lots of good things you're getting. But what you are getting is you're getting two GTX 1080s that are water-cooled. And this isn't just your standard, just dual radiator thing that plugs onto the processor. This has cooling pumps. This is a legit liquid cooling system that ties into the video cards and everything. For me to find these two water-cooled cards or cards that had the ports to accept a water-cooling unit, Two of them was roughly around 1500 bucks, So you are getting a lot of high-end components with this system. And the other thing that you get here is you're getting two of these one terabyte SSDs. And you're getting two of them because they're in a RAID 0 configuration. So not only is, you know, SSDs fast enough by themselves, but when you're running them in a RAID 0, you're getting double SSD speed. That's almost a gig per second transfer rate that is way fast but is it worth it for seven thousand dollars and again lifetime parts and service warranty and with this particular system guys if you are not too savvy with building a pc building something like this takes a lot of knowledge and expertise to configure an SLI system, to configure this type of water cooling, to configure the RAID, to make all the configurations and tweaks to make this system perform the best it can, you've got to have a lot of know-how and understanding of what you're doing. When you get into overclocking, when you get into this level of a system, it is very easy to destroy your components due to overheating, due to overclocking them too high. So. A lot of that situation, I believe, goes into the cost of this system as well. It's $7,000. So right here, $7,197. I was able to duplicate this build for $4,378. That's roughly a difference of $2,800. So if you were to get this X10 system, you are essentially paying $2,800 for their lifetime warranty and someone to build the system for you. To me, that is definitely not worth it. That is just me. I think it's a ripoff. But again, these guys are praised for having the lifetime warranties and great customer service. Does that constitute or justify the high cost? To me, no, it doesn't. If I was going to recommend someone to go out and buy a good gaming PC, I would point them towards the CyberPower PC or iBuyPower. And there's lots of other places that you can buy pre-built PCs. Newegg has a lot of MSI builds, Asus builds for under a thousand dollars that are great gaming systems. It's just a matter of doing your homework before you buy it. Break down the components, do a comparison, see if what you're getting is really of value. I mean, if you're, you know, look, getting a 50 to 60 percent markup on the components you have, that's just ridiculous. You need to look somewhere else. So, or build it yourself. You're always going to save money building your own PC. And I know that a lot of people that are just now, that are new to the PC gaming environment or new to the PC gaming world uh, may be scared to build their own system, uh, may not be 100% sure how to do it, may be worried about breaking something, not maybe not knowing how to configure drivers, components, things like that to get the best performance out of your system. If you guys want, let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to break down one of my systems and actually do a step-by-step -step build from just you know the empty case all the way to installing Windows. Let me know if that's something you guys are interested in. If not, cool, whatever. Go ahead and uh, please like, comment, and subscribe on my videos. I love doing this. I know I don't have a lot of uh, subs yet or a whole lot of views, but I'm trying to get there and give you guys good information. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.